Hello everybody, um, I'd like to read a poem for you and then do a bit of explication. Uh, this particular uh, photo is kind of interesting, it's the first skull that uh, uh, Giger ever had. It was given to him by his father and inspired a lot of his work, um, so I thought it was appropriate. Here goes. The skull, the gift of the first skull. The first skull I encountered, the first we, the frozen tongue a glue between jaw and skull proper from the wolf carcass. Roadkill left to thaw under a gloss black trash bag, the stink muted by the down, rush cold. Watch my instructor pull the bag back, see the intact but dead animal. Instructor's buoy knife sliding through the knuckle bones of the neck, the serrations of it, snicker jerk of blade, one quick motion, my instructor handing it to me, gloveless, deep flesh this, the frozen tongue, a glue between jaw and skull proper, there is no wolf, only wolves, here, take this from me. I cradle the rotting skull, no skull, Seven skulls for seven wolves, no goats to eat, and countless skulls to deflesh. The tongue glue unstuck, and we all howling, no me, only countless me. Stand there, cut this away, no me, exponential. We dump the bones into buckets full of water and bleach behind the math science building, the bones settling, the flesh itself, its own sort of gift for strong-bellied scavengers, soon a murky sediment overhead. The crossbeams of telephone lines drag me somnambulant through those days, a cycle of cleansing repeated forever. I am left intact but dead among the roadway with no sense of smell. I think one of the strangest aspects of me being a writer is that just about every single poem I've written, uh, when it comes back from a workshop or from someone who randomly reads it uh, out of you know the context of daily living, um, their feedback is almost always, I, I don't understand or um, I don't know why you wrote this tell me why you should pay attention to this and uh, because of that I have a sort of desperation to be understood and um, I think part of what causes so much confusion by the work that I like to do is I, I have a, a very different sort of set of circumstances and context uh, with uh, from which I write um, I'd like to share a few of those in regards to this poem, uh, which is The Gift of the First Skull, uh, as recently published in Spectrum 2. Um, I think the first thing to, to do would be to maybe talk about where the poem comes from, which is uh, uh, the reading of a particular set of uh, philosophers. Memories of a Sorcerer One A becoming animal always involves a pack, a band, a population, a peopling, and short a multiplicity. We sorcerers have always known that. It may very well be that other agencies, moreover very different from one another, have a different appraisal of the animal. One may retain or extract from the animal certain characteristics, species, and genera forms and functions, etc. Society and the state need animal characteristics to use for classifying people. Natural history and science need characteristics in order to classify the animals themselves. Serialism and structuralism either graduate characteristics according to their resemblances or order them according to their differences. Animal characteristics can be mythic or scientific. But we are not interested in characteristics. What interests us are modes of expansion, propagation, occupation, contagion, peopling. I am legion. The wolf man fascinated by several wolves watching him. What would a lone wolf be? Or a whale? 
a louse, a rat, a fly. Beelzebub is the devil, but the devil as lord of flies. The wolf is not fundamentally a characteristic or a certain number of characteristics. It is a wolving. That day, the wolfman rose from the couch particularly tired. He knew that Freud had a genius for brushing up against the truth and passing it by, then filling the void with associations. He knew that Freud knew nothing about wolves, or anuses for that matter. The only thing Freud understood was what a dog is and a dog's tail. It wasn't enough. It wouldn't be enough. The wolfman knew that Freud would soon declare him cured, but that it was not at all the case, and his treatment would continue for all eternity under Brunswick, Lacan, Leclerc. Finally, he knew that he was in the process of acquiring a veritable proper name, the wolfman, a name more properly his than his own, since it attained the highest degree of singularity and the instantaneous apprehension of a generic multiplicity, wolves. He knew that this new and true proper name would be disfigured and misspelled, retranscribed as patronomic uh, later on. What should have been done is the opposite. All of this should be understood in intensity. The wolf is the pack. In other words, the multiplicity instantaneously apprehended as such insofar as it approaches or moves away from zero each distance being non-decomposable. Zero is the body without organs of the wolfman. And so here it is. Um, my point, I, I, it's uh, it's funny. I I always guess that everyone's favorite thing is to read uh, Deleuze and Guattari uh, until they go blind or whatever it is we poets and thinkers do. Uh, we certainly usually do it alone, so this is odd for me, but it's my birthday, so if you've made it this far, indulge me a little farther. Um, this painting here uh, was done um, by a student artist, and I'm gleaming the cube a bit here by um, presenting it here, but uh, this is Morgan Allen's Cursed Wolf, and I feel like Morgan is doing some of the things that I'm doing uh, with their work. Um, and that is approaching sort of contemporary work in, and uh, wondering about cubism and engagement of multiplicity. And um, I think what we're performing is a sort of um, hypercubism and hyper Dadaism. Um, it's uh, image and word salad, um, but absent the damage done by Freud. Um, so many of us have spent so long feeling like we're stabbing a screwdriver into our brains because we don't fit in or we're not quite right. Um, so bear with me just a little bit further and maybe it'll make sense. Maybe this will help your work somehow. Um, maybe we'll just continue to pro progress the conversation a little further uh, than our um, esteemed um, foregoers. So this last bout kind of summarizes why I wrote my poem. Uh, and this is a, again from the Deleuze and Guattari. Um, Memories of a Sorcerer too. Our first principle was pack and contagion. The contagion of the pack, such is the path becoming animal takes. But a second principle seemed to tell us the opposite. Wherever there is multiplicity, you will also find an exceptional individual, and it is with that individual that an alliance must be made in order to become animal. There may be no such thing as a lone wolf, but there is a leader of the pack, a master of the pack, or else the old deposed head of the pack now living alone. There is the loner, and there is the demon. So... This all closes around in some odd way towards an individual wanting to be understood and only having the to tools of the mul multiplicity uh, with which to represent themselves. And even as they represent themselves, they realize that there is no um, 
sharp contrast or sharp outline between the said individual and the multiplicity that somehow or both and many of us have spent our whole lives trying to reconcile that in sadness and loneliness and um, alcoholism and drug dependency and so many of us have ended up in institutions and I wonder what would have happened in Nijinsky if someone had just listened to him when he fell through the mouth of metaphor and landed in that wonderful aesthetic place where everything collapsed down to unity. So this brings us basically to um, the poem itself. Um, and uh, the, the, the one thing that I want to say about this is that um, it was an actual experience um, the, the story, um, not about becoming roadkill, but but about actually um, defleshing a wolf skull was one of my um, teenage experiences where an instructor actually did exactly what's uh, written in the poem. Um, in, in hindsight, uh, what um, my instructor did was a gift. Um, it's not that he was a cruel person, um, although there was an un unintentional side effects, you know, not being able to eat meat for a great deal of time. Um, I actually lost my sense of smell permanently um, from um, this experience and from um, bleaching um, sea lion bones. Um, but that, that it was a gift in the sense that he was a naturalist and he, he gave me an experience, um, rather unintentionally, that made, made me feel closer not only to nature but the, the responsible stewardship of nature um, and um, an identification with the animal that I was working on which uh, that's in fact quite a valuable gift. So uh, here's the poem uh, one last time uh, but uh, read with uh, images displayed rather than words um, in uh, hopes to sort of spur on uh, a further conversation, um, kind of a cross-media representation of the work. Thank you so much for listening to me and uh, for having uh, hopefully a good time with this and uh, maybe this will provide fruit for you to uh, produce uh, more of your own work or it might sway uh, in some way beneficial um, the, uh, the art dialogue. Thank you so much. Take care. Uh, onward. The gift of the first skull. The first skull I encountered, this first we, the frozen, tongue a glue between jaw and skull proper from the wolf carcass. Roadkill left a thaw under a gloss black trash bag, the stink muted by the down rush cold. Watch my instructor pull the bag back, see the intact but dead animal, instructors Bowie knife sliding through the knuckle bones of the neck, the serrations of it, snicker jerk of blade, one quick motion, my instructor handing it to me, gloveless, deflesh this, the frozen tongue, a glue between jaw and skull proper, there is no wolf, only wolves here, take this from me, I cradle the rotting skull, no skull, seven skulls for seven wolves, no goats to eat, and countless skulls to deflesh. The tongue glue unstuck and we all howling, no me, only countless me. Stand there, cut this away, no me, exponential. We dump the bones into bucketfuls of water and bleach behind the math science building, the bones settling the flesh itself its own sort of gift for strong-bellied scavengers, soon a murky sediment overhead. The cross beams of telephone lines drag me somnambulant through those days, a cycle of cleansing repeated forever. I am left intact, but dead along the roadway with no sense of smell.